Hey, do you have trouble with the whole saying, just choose joy? I do. I have trouble with it. I can't always choose it. It's hard for me to do. But I'm learning some secrets. I'm learning some steps to take to help me um, receive that joy that Jesus has for me, for it to be restored again. So if you have trouble with the joy killers, Come join me today. I'm Andy Lee and I have a website called wordsbyandylee.com where you can get monthly reading plans based on a topic this whole year we're talking about Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And this month we're on joy. We're focused on joy and joy is a hard thing. Joy, I know choose joy is a great saying and it's wonderful, but in reality, that choice is really hard sometimes. And as humans, we just have a hard time um, making it happen. We can't, in fact, because the fruit of the spirit of joy is supernatural. We can't fake it till we make it. So I've been talking about joy killers, those joy stealers, um, and three things in particular. We've had a message on, first of all, how to activate the Holy Spirit in our lives, and that message is on breathe, how to do that. The second message is on the first joy killer, and that is jealousy or comparison, how that can take away our joy so quickly and what to do with that. And the last one that I've just recently done last week was judgment, how judgment can take away our joy and what to do with that, how to be aware of that and, and how to work with it to restore your joy. And then the third one today, our final J, joy killer, is, are you ready? Dun, 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 is junk. Did you know junk can take away your joy? Now, I'm not talking about stuff. Even though sometimes that takes away my joy when my house is filled with the junk all over the place and I've got to get it straight and clean when it explodes when everybody comes home or whatever. Um, but I'm not talking about that kind of junk. I'm talking about two things. I'm talking about everything up here. I'm talking about the junk in our mind. I'm talking about stinking thinking, about negativity, and I'm talking today about anxiety and worry, and that that junk in our brain can take away the joy of Jesus in us. Amen. Let me pray us up and we're gonna we're going to unpack a scripture and talk about what to do about junk that takes away our joy. Hold my hand. Thank you, Lord, so much for this word. I pray that you activate it in the lives of those watching, Lord, that the junk will no longer have a hold and be able to to take away the joy that you have for them. I pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. All right, so let's dig into it. We're going to start today with scripture. Matthew 6, 33, talking about, talking about joy. Um, actually, He's talking about worry in here. So Matthew 6, 33, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. I'm going to read that again. Do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Hello! Yes, each day has enough trouble of its own. How many of you have worried about things that never, ever happened? Yes? Yes? Yes, amen. Somebody say amen in the comments. Um, yes, we worry about things that don't even happen. So what happens 
when we worry about something that's in the future that may or may not happen is we lose bits and pieces of today and we lose our joy in today because we're worrying about something that may never happen and probably won't happen but we're worrying it and trying to figure it out on our own right so worry worry is a really bad joy killer but god but god says don't worry i will provide all of matthew 6 he says i tell you in verse 25 do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or your body, what you will wear. Is it not more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can I just ask you, do you know, do you really trust that God is good? And that God loves you. So, see, I think part of our worry is that we really don't believe that God's going to work everything out for good. Romans 8, 28. We really struggle with letting go of that control. Part of the steps of activating the Holy Spirit and breathing the Holy Spirit in Part of those steps, B was to believe in Jesus, R was to repent of our sins and know we need him and change the way we're thinking, renewing our minds. E was to empty ourselves out of our own plans and pray for God's plans. And I just want to camp out there, emptying our mind out, ourselves out of our own plans. Have you been making plans? Have you been trying to figure out something how to make something work? If it's wearing you out, if your head hurts and it's not falling together, quit. Just quit. Raise that white flag. Lord, I can't do this. You are smarter than I am. I empty myself out. So you'll breathe in, Holy Spirit. And you'll breathe out your plans trying to figure it out I lived through this once many times in fact but years ago we had just moved into town my kids were in high school and middle school and we were actually enrolling them in school when I got a phone call that my mom only had 48 hours to live now, I was living in North Carolina, and she was in Oklahoma, actually in Texas at the time. She had been sick for many, many years, and it was not a surprise, but the timing seemed terrible because we weren't even in our house. My kids needed to go to school, and my husband needed to get through the first week of his work before he could go to a funeral. So all day that day, I, I knew I couldn't get home in time. I was just trying to figure out how in the world, when we should have the funeral, so everybody could, you know, go to school and, and the cats would be okay in the hotel. And just, just, you know, trying to figure it all out. My head hurt. It was about to burst. And I remember, I love how God just gives us these memories to, to remember forever. But I remember we had gone to lunch and I had a, a hamburger in front of me and a Coke. And I took a sip of that Coke and I just released it to God. And I said, my head hurts and I can't do this. I can't figure out the logistics, Lord. You have to do it. It wasn't much longer, I think maybe by the end of lunch, he had whispered into my mind, have the funeral on Sunday, which was a really weird thing. Usually funerals aren't on Sunday. But anyway, I called my sister. It worked for them. 
That way we all were able to make it to the funeral. Mike was able to go do his job for the week. The kids were able to get in school and not miss a lot of school. And it all worked out. So much so that my, my husband even had people that they came to see us in Texas and were able to take him to another thing that he had to do for his job in Texas. So it all worked out. So when we're worried and we're filled with anxiety, really it's, um, it's sin. We need to repent of it. I'm so sorry, Lord, that I'm trying to figure this out. We need to empty ourselves out. And that way, Holy Spirit can come in and He can give us the wisdom we need. And He can show us how something needs to be done, if that's what we're worrying about. Or just give us the peace we need that no matter what, it's going to be okay. And He can work it out. The other form of junk that gets into our head and really steals joy is stinking thinking. Do you know what I'm talking about? That thinking like, oh, I'm not any good at all. I'm such a loser. God hates me. Anybody ever had those thoughts? God's mad at me. I've done something wrong. Um... I'm never going to get anywhere. I'm never going to be good enough. What is some of the junk you think of? What is some of your stinking thinking that you deal with? Put it down in the comments. And we're going to, we're going to go to battle for that stinking thinking. So what do we do with that stinking thinking? We've got to give it to God. We've got to give it to God. We need to ask for Him to renew our minds. I believe the first thing we do is repent. We take that stinking thinking to the cross because you know what? It's what the enemy wants you to believe. It's not truth from God. Anything that's condemning and not freeing, anything that burdens us, anything that weighs us down is not from God. It's from the enemy who kills and steals and destroys. Last week I talked about judgment. We talked about condemnation versus conviction. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So some of us condemn ourselves with our own thoughts and our words. If you are doing that to yourself, wake up. Realize what's going on. Realize that the enemy has got his upper hand going on. And he wants to steal your destiny. He wants to take away your purpose that God has for you. Because when you're stuck in your muck and you're sinking thinking, you can't do anything. You're comparing yourself. All, all that stuff is happening. So God wants to free you from that. Know that it's not from him I repent, take it to the cross, write it down, get on your knees, picture the cross, picture his blood dripping down on that stinking thinking, picture his blood dripping down on that worry and anxiety, ask forgiveness, pray for him to redeem and to heal, to make whole, give it to Jesus, lay it down at the cross. Did you know it's level at the cross? And we all have junk that we need to take to Jesus into the cross. I want to close today with a great scripture about joy. Are you ready? <laughs> it's Romans 15, 13. And I believe it is a verse that it should be memorized by all of us. It's such a powerful prayer and promise and benediction. So I'm going to close today with Romans 15, 13. As we talk about stinking thinking and we talk about worry and how they steal our joy, listen to this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, that you may overflow with hope 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, may it be so. Thank you for watching today. If you have questions, if you have prayer requests, if you have other things you want to study, please leave it at the comments below. Also, subscribe, get notifications, share with your friends. If you're learning from these, if they're helping you live that abundant life that Jesus promised, I hope you'll share these videos. May God bless you and fill you with all joy and peace as you trust Him and you take those worries and take that stinking thinking to the cross. Anyway, next week we are studying peace. We're going to start a new series on um, the fruit of the Spirit of peace and cultivating that peace within us. You can go to wordsbyindylee.com on the 1st of April. There'll be a new series, a new article on peace and a new reading plan. Check it out. Thanks for joining me. Bye.